Welcome to the Maritime Vision Podcast. I'm your host, Paul Wioli. In each episode, we bring you exclusive interviews with maritime professionals, industry experts, and students. Our guests come from different backgrounds, including shipping, yachting, offshore, and more. Our goal is to give you all the knowledge you need to succeed in the maritime industry. Hello everyone, welcome back to a new podcast episode and today we are with George. Welcome George, it's a pleasure to having you today. So George is a vessel operator, so today we are going to talk about vessel operations. Again, I did many episodes about vessel operations, but I still want to, you know, to to go deeply into these topics, which is very important in the maritime industry. So welcome, uh, George. Thank you to be here. Can you introduce yourself, please? Thank you for having me, Paul. So my name is George and uh, I have a bachelor degree in economics uh, from Greece. And uh, I have a master's degree from maritime economics and logistics in Erasmus University, Rotterdam. My desire to go to vessel operations was inherited by my family. My father actually used to work in vessel operations. Uh, after I finished my master's degree, I wasn't sure if I wanted to be actually, you know, like what I really wanted to do uh, in uh, the maritime industry because I have interests also in chartering, in trade. But uh, when I did uh, my first job in, uh, in vessel operations, I was very pleasantly surprised. It is a job that... Uh, uh, calls for 100% of yourself to uh, solve problems. You have uh, a rewarding feeling when, uh, the ve- uh, when the vessel completes a successful round trip. And uh, if there is any issues, this is when makes this job very um, interesting. Very, uh, it makes you, it pushes you to try to find solutions to do to solve the issue and uh, make sure that uh, the crew, the uh, this vessel and the cargo is uh, safe, depending the issue. Okay. Okay. So you introduced uh, a little bit the job. What is it? Can you make maybe talk a little bit more about what is vessel operations? Uh, what is your goal on your role in the, in the maritime industry? Um, personally, for me, uh, I'm interested uh, currently in uh, vessel operations. Uh, I've operated uh, uh, vessels, livestock vessels and uh, container ship uh, vessels. Livestock vessels were uh, for uh, short-term voyages, but also for long-term voyages. And uh, the approach in livestock vessels of uh, the operation of uh, livestock vessels was more vessel oriented. You had the vessel, you wanted it to go as it was uh, brokered, from uh, as it was uh, sailed from the charter uh, chartering department and you wanted to go up to the specs to arrive on the designated time and uh, you would always be in close communication with the captain and make sure that uh, he provided ETAs and uh, that uh, uh, it had enough fuel to make the round trips and also that uh, you would like to know uh, the amount of fuel the vessel had so you could choose the correct ports in order to have the cheapest amount of uh, fuel purchased. Mm. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. In so uh, sh- the current company, I'm working. Oh yes. Yeah, go please. <laughs> oh. uh, in uh, the current company, uh, I'm employed r- right now. They operate container vessels, and uh, it is from the Rotterdam UK trade and the UK trade to Rotterdam. Mm. Uh, this is my department. And in this uh, uh, trade, the operations, it's more port oriented. We have the vessels, of course, we communicate with the captain and, uh, but we communicate more with the chief. So what uh, is the main uh, goal? It is to manage to load as much cargo purchased from trade onto the vessel. And we are in close communication with the chief who is going to uh, review the storage plan provided by the terminals to see if it's viable to be carried by the vessel. What is interesting, it is that if we have like a full vessel load, uh, then we have to be in very close communication with the chief because there are stack weight limitations. And in these situations, we have to uh, think out of the box, try to find solutions on how to carry more cargo or which orders we need to allocate to the next sale. Okay. 
Okay, what kind of ships? Uh, it, it was uh, maybe you you mentioned I, I didn't uh, memorize mm -hmm. it. What what kind of ships? Uh, we operate uh, currently or in general? Uh, yeah, in general. I mean, in your based on your experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I have operated uh, livestock vessels, which were medium-sized uh, vessels. And uh, currently, I operate uh, feeders, small feeder vessels that uh, they go, they cross the British Canal. Okay. Okay. And about, um, so you you explain a little bit. So uh, first, firstly, ship planning, how it works. Can you talk a little bit uh, more about it? Because it's quite interesting, ship planning. Um, <clears throat> cu uh, currently, the vessel always keeps track of uh, the amount of bunkers um, that uh, are being consumed, how much fuel they have and uh, when they need to do bunkering. And uh, when they have a need for bunkers, they will send us an uh, email saying, we need uh, this amount of bunkers, please uh, make an inquiry. We make an inquiry with uh, a company that uh, is uh, uh, looking for us, and uh, we have a contract them. They're going to find the amount, and then we will uh, make smoothly bunkering, we will organize a smooth bunker operation by providing vessel prospects. Mm. In uh, these short sea voyages, like uh, a sailing, for example, from Rotterdam to Hope, it is 19 hours sailing on echo speed, around 10 to 12.5 knots. So um, the route planning, it's not uh, something which uh, can have a significant impact uh, money-wise. So what uh, we're trying to do, it is to be on top of uh, weather conditions to see if it's going to have to be wind, if it's going to be um, uh, fog, because these uh, factors can uh, slow down the vessel and uh, put the schedule back. Mm. Okay, very interesting. On, uh, oh, you need to know at least uh, the vessel itself because uh, for, for the fuel consumption, the speed, the cruising speed, etc., uh, is it easy uh, to take into account this data? Yes, yes. The, currently, we are under um, um, creating new ways, uh, taking as much data as we can from our vessel and uh, trying to find uh, where we lose money or mm. which is costs us more in order to improve and advance to the future. We, oh. The vessel send us uh, arrival and departure reports, which they have all the necessary data, but we use uh, special pl platforms, which they show us the route the vessel took, how much uh, consumption and how much CO2 the vessel submitted. So okay. we input the data, and uh, from this data, we see how much time it was the port stay, how long did, did the captain took to go. And if, for example, he used the uh, high speed, he arrived at the port and waited outside until the lock is booked. Because uh, in UK, the ports we call, they have locks, uh, which um, we need to book it in advance. So if uh, the captain, for example, goes with a high speed and arrives earlier, like uh, if he arrives one hour earlier, uh, there is it's very difficult for us to put the vessel one hour earlier alongside and mm. uh, because in this job, we also have a direct communication with uh, the terminals. So we call the terminals and uh, we give them the schedule of the vessel. The vessel is going to be alongside for 12 hours. And from that, uh, from let's say 0, 100 hours until 1200 hours midday. And uh, from that point, uh, the terminal tell us, yes, okay, we have the labor to work your vessel with two cranes which uh, they give us the moves, the their terminal output, which could be like uh, for haul, it is an average output would be 20, 20, 21 moves per hour, and we calculate the moves. Okay. So for the amount of units that uh, the vessel comes, uh, like uh, one of uh, our flagship, for example, can carry 250 units. Mm. So we say that it is 250 discharge and uh, in an optimal scenario, we'd like 250 to load and bring back as uh, imports to NL. Mm. So okay. we need to take all of those into consideration. And then is where the weather plays an important role. 
because there are strong winds, the operations are halted, and uh, if there is fog, the vessel cannot depart. Also, the operations can be halted. And uh, the worst case scenario would be not to be able to complete discharge and uh, mm. to return with uh, units which we have on the vessel to be discharged and we have to ship them again. Okay. And how are you managing the if you have delay or even, as you said, the, the, the ship is like quicker as expected? So you need to take into account these things. Or, or is it challenging? What kind of decision you can make uh, with the terminal, for example? Yes. Uh, we stay in close communication with the terminal, but uh, uh, the more interesting part is if it happens, it happens. We cannot do any, we do some research. We always try to see if there is different, maybe if uh, we know that from the weather apps, we can go like um, earlier. Okay. Uh, if we know like from, uh, if the vessel goes from 0 hundred hours to 1200 hours, and we know that uh, at 1000 hours, the weather app says it will have strong winds or fog. Maybe we will discuss with the terminal if it's possible to bring the vessel earlier and also if that's a viable solution because we need also to consider the Rotterdam terminal. Will be the Rotterdam, ter the Rotterdam terminal available to finish the vessel with the allocated cargo on time or not? Mm. Or maybe we could delay the vessel. But then we also need to communicate with both terminals and also with the captain and the chief. Yes, because sometimes if you book, if you schedule the vessel at this time, uh, maybe you need the cranes, you need some equipments uh, in the terminal. But if you are, for example, you have a delay, uh, maybe these cranes are booked for another ship. So you need maybe to wait uh, your for uh, additional time. Uh, usually it's very difficult for the terminal because um, the booking of um, the labor and uh, the slots, the linesmen, uh, it is uh, happening one week before, prior uh, to the vessel's arrival to port. Mm -hmm. So what uh, we have to do at that point is uh, be lucky. Because as I've been working for this company for seven months now. And uh, I've never seen that the terminal was... Actually, maybe once the terminal was able to provide more labor than it was actually purchased. But the most usual scenario, it is that uh, the vessel will be, if it comes earlier and the lock has a slot and the vessel can come, she goes alongside and they do the unlashing of the units and they're ready and the labor starts on the designated time as before. Okay. Okay. Very interesting, actually. So it's one, it's, uh, one big challenge uh, in, the, in your job. Uh, and then you provide information about uh, uh, loading and unloading the ship. As you mentioned, uh, you need to make sure that it's better to have a fuel uh, booked ship. I mean, because of course uh, you make more money, but uh, how are you planning all this stuff or it works actually? The vessel is being booked by trade. So what's happening? We have uh, the call. Let's say uh, we have a call on Sunday uh, for the port of Hull. And the uh, trade knows that uh, like two weeks in advance and uh, sell our salesman, they go, they make bookings, customer service also receive bookings and they input in our system. And uh, those bookings are allocated to Sunday sale. The vessel has a capacity, the one that is going to, um, let's say it has like 250 units. And uh, what uh, is happening if there are booked like 300, maybe 350 uh, bookings, we will try to see if there are any new customers. We'll try to see if there are urgent orders. And what is our goal? Our goal is to keep our customers happy. Also new customers, but also customers we already have. So how the customer is happy? We have the delivery date and the delivery date that uh, it is on the booking, the unit needs to arrive. It's uh, the units, uh, they have two, there is key to key, which means from port to port. And then the customer picks up the unit on his own, maybe with our, uh, maybe with trucks or train, depending on his option. And we also have door to door, which we arrange the transportation. We bring in our units to the customer, the company, and then the company loads the unit. And then the unit goes to uh, the recipient's address with our transportation means. We have transportation via vessel, via truck, birds, 
and rail. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. How will you manage the, the communication with the terminal? It can be quite interesting to know this. Oh, oh yes. Um, uh, the terminal, uh, we have EDI connections. We have our uh, platforms and the platforms, uh, it is our platforms. So we have the data uh, from our um, from our customer service and then we send uh, the load list that uh, the, all the units that are on the load list we send it to the uh, to the terminals with EDI connection. This is for Rotterdam terminal. But uh, for UK, it is a different uh, uh, game, let's say. There is a destinate platform, which uh, the terminal can see all the units that they are arriving on key, the units that they are to arrive on key, and the units which they have arrived, but uh, they are not cleared. Because if uh, the units aren't cleared, they cannot sail. Mm. So uh, what we do, it is we notify the customer that uh, the unit needs to be cleared for export. Otherwise, it won't make current sailing. And uh, besides that, we also ask for an update from our customers for the units that they are to arrive. So we can have an informed to have all the possible information to make a decision. Because a unit that uh, has a delivery date tomorrow, but uh, hasn't arrived yet. And uh, it might be delayed for unforeseen circumstances or because the customer wasn't able to find uh, transportation in time, uh, we can allocate it to the next sailing, even though the delivery date is tomorrow. Okay. Okay, very interesting. And uh, about uh, stakeholders, I mean, you work as vessel operator, you say closely with the captain, but who else are you working with? I mean, in the company, uh, the charter manager, uh, who are you working with? Currently, uh, we work closely, more closely with the chief officer for the vessels. Uh, the chief officer makes the storage plan mm. and we are in close communication. But uh, in company, in the departments, we are in close communication with um, uh, the claims department. If there are issues with uh, chartered units, rented units from different companies uh, with uh, the equipment control, which is for our units. And uh, if there is any damage or if we need to allocate our stack densities at ports, we communicate with uh, equipment control. And um, also we're in close communication with trade who they create the schedule and also the sailings we have. Uh, if, uh, for example, a vessel goes for dry docking and it's not available, those slots we will either allocate to our vessels or we're going to book slots in vessels from different companies to be shipped to the clients. Okay. So we, we are in close communication with uh, customer service because customer service is our direct line to the customer and clearance of the units. It happens from the customer. They need to provide the uh, export documentation. And especially if uh, they need to uh, ship dangerous goods units, they need to provide a dangerous good declaration, which is very important because those units, they go under segregation rules. You cannot put mm. two um, units which they have two chemicals, which if they go into... If they touch each other, they could be an explosion or toxic gases. So they have been stowed with uh, some space in between. And those uh, dangerous goods declaration helps the terminal to know which are the units, the vessel planners, and also the crew members. Because okay. our first uh, priority, it is the safety of the crew, then the vessel, and then the cargo. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. And um, about insurance, are you uh, managing uh, uh, the insurance of the vessel or it's the role of the ship uh, owner, ship manager? Um, this uh, falls under our... Oh, and also for the previous question, we are in close communication with our uh, superintendents. Who they do the ship oh. management part. Uh, the knowledge of the superintendents always helps uh, the operations to take informed decisions and to know the maximum capability of the vessel. Uh, for the insurance part, the insurance usually falls under our uh, superintendents, the uh, uh, our ship managers. And uh, if the vessel is ours, it is 
uh, in for our company to uh, for example if you have a damaged uh, uh, part of the vessel then uh, we will uh, ask the captain take pictures please uh, make sure that uh, we have uh, all the necessary documentation and those necessary documentation are going to send to our claims department and our claims department will pursue the matter from there okay okay very interesting so now i want to uh, ask you uh, more questions about your background i mean your experience do you have anecdotes to share uh, as vessel operator uh, like challenge you faced during your your path on journey as a vessel operator oh yes yes <laughs> um the, this is the most interesting part of this job the unpres the unforeseen circumstances this is what uh, really makes you you know go think out of the box see what can i do how can i make the vessel live uh in this uh, in my current employment we have shifts we work uh, morning shift and uh, we work also on the regular shift and we also have the afternoon shift uh, i was in uh, the morning shift and uh, i was driving to go to work and then i received an mail <coughs> from the terminal saying that our vessel was still at port the current vessel was scheduled to leave at zero to uh, zero to hundred hours in the morning and uh, i saw the email at uh, zero uh, six hundred and forty five hours and uh, i'm like oh why why is this happening so Uh, then the first thing I called the captain and I say, hi captain, good morning, please advise on uh, why you're still at port. And uh, he advised that it was due to fog. And unfortunately, when it's fog, you cannot do anything. You have to wait for the fog to leave because port regulations wouldn't allow for the pilot to go on board. So the vessel couldn't leave. So in these situations, you have to inform the necessary, uh, uh, the interested parties and uh, The interest parties can make a decision regarding the big picture of uh, the company. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. So it's, it can be uh, quite stressful sometimes. Yes. yes. Huh. Uh, we had the, uh, and it could be a very small thing that could uh, affect the operational capability of vessel. Uh, the vessel, our vessels currently, uh, they operate on a gyro compass. The gyro compass was malfunction for a vessel that uh, was about to go alongside that hole. So uh, I advised the captain to use the magnet magnetic compass, which is <clears throat> mandatory for all vessels. And uh, the captain could sail with that, but they needed class permission because if they didn't mm. have the class permission, they couldn't sail without the magnetic compass. Uh, so after we received the class permit, the class permission that they can sail, We knew that the vessel will sail no matter what. So then we tried to find a way to fix the gyro compass at home. But we weren't able to find any technician for that. And then we booked a technician in uh, Rotterdam. And the vessel managed to sail with a magnetic compass. And uh, arrived to Rotterdam. But uh, the technician comes, gives the changes the part, they do some testing. And the new part uh, they inputted was faulty. So then we say, oh. Well, that is a problem because the terminal told us uh, that uh, the vessel cannot sail. If uh, mm -hmm. the, the authority, the port authority told us that the vessel cannot uh, sail having a faulty gyro compass. So the technician informed us that uh, they will change the faulty compass and see what happens. But all in all is that uh, we have always to assume that uh, something is going to go wrong and always be on our feet in order to tackle these situations so the vessels can uh, sail on time and uh, of course always the protection of the crew the vessel and the cargo okay wow so yeah i, I imagine you have so, so many uh, stories it's uh, that's the best job if you want to to have all the trouble possible in uh, to 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 see all the cases i can say uh, i want to ask you more questions for people you know who want to start in this field uh, what kind of advice can you give to a young uh, young student or even uh, young professionals who want to start uh, to work in vessel operations vessel operations uh, it has an administrative part uh, it has these uh, events that uh, they happen and uh, you have to think out of the box 
So you have to have a natural love for problem solving. Problem solving and also always a thirst for knowledge. Always be um, informed about new changes, regulations, um, new technologies, new situations. Uh, and uh, that's it. Uh, yeah. have, uh, let's and uh, always a positive uh, attitude. Okay, that's because a... this this job you do something and then you have to jump for to a different thing at the same time. And when uh, it is uh, you have high volumes uh, work wise, then uh, it is uh, you have to be calm under pressure to be able to use the stress of the job to help you grow, to use it as a strength. Okay. Okay. It's good to know. Uh, I have two uh, last questions. Um, so you, you mentioned about shift. Uh, it means that you have shift uh, as vessel operator. You have uh, someone responsible for the morning. How it works? Um, <clears throat> uh, currently, uh, we, in, uh, we have shifts, three shifts. The morning shift, which starts from 0, 0700 hours. Uh, until uh, uh, 1530 hours, the regular shift from 0, 130 hours until 1700 hours, and the evening shift, which starts at 0, 200 hours until 2100 hours. Operationally wise, it is uh, very beneficial because when the person is at shift and uh, there is an issue with the vessels, that person deals with that. We mm. have for different trades one person. So there are also uh, two minds, let's say. If it's something which uh, you might not know, you're not sure, you can always stay in close communication with your, the colleague that is from the other team on the shift, and you can use two different perspectives and approaches on the issue to solve it. Okay, very, very good to know. So it means that uh, you follow the vessel almost 24 hours? Yes, yes. Because those are short sea uh, voyages, there is a call to a port almost uh, uh, every day, if you consider Rotterdam and the UK as well. Mm. So there is to be someone to make sure everything is going according to plan. And but, uh, if there's an issue, to tackle those issues. But, I mean, um, if, for example, the vessel is, uh, is sailing in the middle of the ocean, I mean, you have nothing to do almost, but if it's, I imagine you have like a uh, moment, it's very crucial to be present on other moments as vessel operator. You say, oh, the ship is just sailing in, at cruising speed. I don't think I will be useful right now. Is it, is it like that? Or you always need to be, you always have work to do. Um, yeah, well, it depends also on the workload and uh, the issues, but um, you always, uh, there is always work to do. Um, for example, we have KPIs which we need to input. We have uh, it is a, a, I really like this job because for the eight hours from there, I have something to do, and this really helps me because when, for example, the vessel comes to port, you have to collect uh, before the vessel comes to port, you have to collect the dangerous good declarations, and you have to send them to the vessel and to the terminal because the the regular cargo units can go anywhere you want, but the dangerous goods, they have to be segregated. And sometimes we're talking about uh, 50, even 60 dangerous goods that they're going to be shipped with a vessel. So this prior, you have to prep that. You have also to think ahead. It means the vessel is in the sea, but when the vessel will, uh, let's say, will reach port in 10 hours, uh, you can, you have the load list, the terminal would request the load list at an earlier point, which you will already send. But this doesn't mean I send the load list and it's okay. Because some units may didn't arrive when I made the load list. But uh, you can stay on top of that, see if the unit already arrived and put it on the vessel. Mm. And uh, this is what makes it interesting, trying to load as many units as you can. Okay, very, very good. So you are not uh, only uh, managing issue, you are also optimizing uh, the shipping operations. Yes. So that's very good to know. That's, uh, I want to say that's the end of the podcast, but if you want to add something, that's uh, the moment for you. Do you want to say something more? 
Uh, I think uh, I am all good. Yeah, <laughs> I think you bring a lot of value of on, in this podcast episode. Uh, thank you, George. It was a pleasure to having you. Uh, this episode was very, very insightful. It was not very long, but I mean, people who will listen to this podcast, they will understand everything in what they need to know about vessel operations. So thank you for that. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you for listening and watching this episode. We are looking forward to bring you more inspiring stories for maritime professionals, experts, and students. Do not hesitate to leave a review on Apple Podcast and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Your support means a lot to us, and it greatly helps in our continuous growth. We committed to bringing you more exciting episodes with passionate guests.